So this video is still on the chapter of divisibility in integral domains. We saw the principal ideal domains and unique factorization domains. And of course now we have to get into Euclidean domains. So this video will be about Euclidean domains. We are going to see the definition of a, an Euclidean domain. An integral domain D is called an Euclidean domain if there is a function D from the non-zero elements of the integral domain to the non-negative integers such that 1 D of A has to be less or equal than D of A times B. Uh, a and B, they have to be in the integral domain and they obviously they should all be different from zero, okay? So for all A and B in the integral domain and A and B different from zero. If, point, if this happens and the second condition too, if A and B are in the integral domain where B is different from zero, then there exist elements Q and R such that A this is a division algorithm, right? So A equals BQ plus R and R. Either this is zero or obviously the, um, uh, D of R, this D of R has to be less than D of B here. Okay, if both these uh, conditions are verified, we can say uh, we are in a Euclidean domain. So we can see some uh, very quick examples here. Uh, for instance, the ring of integers, it's an Euclidean domain. So you need a function d, right? Let us say that d of a is uh, the absolute value of A. Okay, so the integers, the ring of integers, uh, is an Euclidean domain. Or, for instance, the ring of polynomials, where F, F, a field. Okay, this is a um, an Euclidean domain too. So the function for this should be d of f x should be, uh, for instance, the, the the function should be the, uh, it uh, maps the polynomial into the degree of poly the polynomial. This is an old trick. Okay, a function that applies the polynomial in the degree of polynomial. Okay, uh, so this ring of polynomials is a, a an Euclidean domain. Okay, so we move into a theorem now that we have the concept of Euclidean domain. Euclidean domain implies principal ideal domain. So every Euclidean domain is a principal ideal domain. And the proof is really simple. We take D and let D be an um, Euclidean domain. Okay. And we take I, a non-zero, an ideal of D. Okay. Now, we pick an element A in the ideal, okay, and we pick it as, uh, in such a way that D of A uh, is minimum, okay. So if this happens, the ideal will be generated by this element that we choose. Okay, because uh, for all B in D 
the ideal, element B in the ideal, uh, there will be uh, Q and R such that B will be equal to this A, right? A Q plus R. Okay, and here either R equals zero or the degree of R will be less than the degree of A. Okay, but um, here let us sort of solve for R. So R will be equal to Sorry, I'm going to put B here. Uh, B minus AQ, right? And this, they are all in the ideal. Okay. Uh, so, uh, just look at this. The, if you see the degree of R, the degree of R, Either R is 0, or the degree of R is less than the degree of A. So, the degree of R cannot be less than the degree of A, right? This cannot happen. And since this cannot happen, so only this one can be true, right? R has to be equal 0. So, this implies that R should be zero. So if r is zero, this one is zero, it disappears. So b is generated, aq, right, is generated by a. So conclusion, big conclusion, b is in the ideal, right, and that proves the theorem. Okay, so um, every Euclidean domain, if you are in an Euclidean domain, any element, we choose this B, this arbitrary B, will be in a, 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 an ideal, and in a particular ideal, the principal ideal. Okay, so this proves the theorem. Okay, every Euclidean domain is a principal ideal domain.